Hi, welcome to Studio Sparks. Today we're working on our landscape studies. Um, we've decided to, to um, do a study of a specific landscape and we started with four different colors as our initial wash or sketch of that landscape. Now we are applying our colors, the second um, glaze of color to add more details and to get the basic colors of each of our images or objects within that landscape. This one um, we're working on our patterns for our leaves of our tree. I'm doing it kind of a pointillist style of texture to give that leaf effect, kind of a dotty way of applying the paint. I'm using a smaller brush, it's probably a size Four is my guess. I can't tell because there's too much paint on my handle. <laughs> so I apologize about that. But um, yeah, so it's a much smaller brush because my image sizes are very, fairly small. I'd say they are a, is it A5 maybe? A6 possibly. Um, it's a, um, so it's just a small study. So I'm using that smaller brush because it's a smaller image and it's hard to um, fill in the space otherwise. So I'm using a rust color at the moment to... So I'm now just adding a rust color to the details of my trunk. Um, with the four studies, it's a good idea to try to use the similar colors for each. So I'm doing both of these, the orange washed landscape and the magenta kind of doing them at the same time so I'm a little more consistent at using the same colors. You can see that I haven't done that as specifically throughout them, but it's good to have that those same colors used so then you can really notice um, how those different colors look differently when you have that base color as um, you're, what you're studying. So we're just looking at how different colors interact with a specific color. So this one is orange. We can see that the browns, um, when next to the orange, they look a lot warmer than, um, say, like the blue in that far bottom right corner. Even the magenta doesn't make the browns look quite as orange as the um, orange or don't, doesn't look quite as warm as the orange color does. Um, this is probably a burnt umber brown that I'm using. Um, the first color was a rusted, kind of more of a rust color. I don't have the exact name because, as you can see, my um, palette is just a mixture of those uh, types of paints. Um, they are a Jassart watercolor discs is what they're called. J-A-S-A-R-T, jazz art. Uh, um, they're really a good palette for like doing these types of studies and um, for if I was to take a, a sketchbook out into nature and draw from real life, you know, so that's something that you could do for this project. Um, you could make it a um, plein air watercolor study. Um, so, yeah, think about that. <coughs> Um, the other thing I'm doing is, yeah, now I'm just adding my the greens to the background for the mountain and trees in the far background. Um, lots of times I normally start with my background. For today, I don't know why I just decided to start with my tree. <laughs> and it is easier to start with the background oftentimes because... You know, you just think of the layers of the painting. Like, so we start with the background and then we work our way forward. Um, so that layering on top. But with watercolor, it is a little bit different because we're not exactly layering necessarily. So I'm not painting the tree over the top of my background. I'm having to think of it as a negative space so that I'm painting around it, painting those areas behind it in a way kind of like negative space painting. So, yep, I'm just filling in the background a bit more for my orange area. You can see that I used a slightly different color green for the orange um, the orange uh, area because 
sometimes when you're doing these studies you can use different colors because you might want to try what that green how it interacts with the orange um, it is good though when you are doing this type of study because what we are trying to figure out is just how all of the colors interact with that one base um, color being different so it is probably a good idea to try to keep them consistent I digressed as you can see <laughs> but you know for your own painting you might want to just try to be very consistent and use the same colors for each of them so then you can really uh, focus in on that the one single variation which was the first layer of paint all right so I'm filling in my blues for my background and for my wa water just um, I'm using a little bit of a ultramarine blue as well as a more of a tealy blue for the water more of the ultramarine blue for the sky and it also gives you an opportunity to just look at um, boat well now I'm just getting my reflections done with the um, orange area and I'll go to the magenta next to fill in those reflections of the backgrounds onto the lake when you're working on these studies you'll oftentimes be able to see oh hey I really like how that worked I think in that study I used purple for my background um, as my first or my second layer of paint and I actually really think that works well and so it might your your studies might develop as you're going so don't necessarily prevent yourself to only use certain colors if um, you get inspired by something that you do in one of the studies and you want to try it with that other color instead to see how it works with that color it's totally legal <laughs> it is your own study so we are using these as a study so they're like um, when you're writing a paper or something and you have to do a sloppy copy so that's kind of what these are they're your sloppy copy so you don't have to worry about making them perfect they are just for you to explore color and to see how you, what paints you like for different parts of this image uh, I noticed with the background in the far right um, study that I did the far right corner that was the blue that I started with I do enjoy that purple background on the to the left I like how that is working and so that's something for me to consider and I um, realized as well while I was doing my magenta and orange studies that oh I forgot to do my reflection of my background in my other two studies so I've come back over to the yellow and blue and I'm adding those reflections so you can always be moving around and that's the nice thing about doing studies it also allows you to let areas dry while while you're working on another area and it and it just gives you an easy flow and you can be working back and forth between those between each of the studies and and it's really interesting you can already see how different each of those little studies are even though we've tried to keep them pretty consistent um, with basic things they all have a different feel I might even consider at one point after I've done all my painting cutting these apart and looking at each of them in a different in a different space you know so that they're separated so I can really study what do I like of each of them so <clears throat> I'm now just adding a little more of the colors to my background and coming back to areas where I realized oh I forgot to do my reflection here in my yellow okra thing so let's add that to see how it works with the rest of the image and um, you can see the 
I'm using um, like an ultramarine blue as well as a green in that reflection of the mountains. So yeah, just continue to enjoy exploring colors with this study. I'm uh, now feeling as though I have gotten most of my base colors for my second coat. So now I'm going to come back in and add some details. I can use a, a calligraphy pen and add some paint to that to get some really fine points created. Or if I prefer, I just use my very fine point brush and I can come in and add those details as well. Just being careful with that fine point brush to keep those fine lines. Um, to create that more detail to my painting. Um, with a study, you don't necessarily need to do these fine details. Studies don't uh, don't require that. But if you want to do some practice and and um, work on you know controlling your smaller brush and getting fine lines, it's a great way to do that. There is also the point where you can come back in and even just adding shadows to the leaf patterns. So this is like our third layer. So I'm going to go back in and add more shadow details to my leaf area so that it gives it more depth and more volume. I'm going to go back into my background and maybe adding more detail to it as well if that's what I'm wanting to practice. So this is just a detailed study, and um, and it's really good at this point. You can see how different these four landscapes, all the same kind of landscape, all have a different bit of a feel. Right now, I can see the orange has a really strong, you know, glow to it. I'm also really attracted to the magenta painting with the magenta originally in the far left corner it just has the tree has a real nice presence um, so I'm just noticing what are the things that are working what what stands out to me which background is, am I most drawn to and that allows me to just collect information and that information I can use to develop my final image so I can use all of these ideas of composition of what what color works best for my background color what color works best for my original uh, initial wash color I could even use two different colors maybe I'll use magenta for the tree and the golden or the orange for my background that's your choice thanks